Welcome to the weather of the space variety. We're looking at the sun in 171 angstroms. While in the midst of an ongoing coronal hole wind stream, we see an active region rising right over here. Here are the magnetic lines. We do see a coronal hole associated with the south pole there. And there's the scenario at 193 angstroms. And here's the real-time solar wind. Phi angle still around 300. Solar wind density 7.25 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed remaining elevated at 537 kilometers per second. Let's look at spaceweathernews.com for some additional data points. X ray flux very low. Magnetometer spikes continue due to the increased solar wind speed. KP index is now at 3. Here are the signets. Going out 10 days in the future. Electron flux finally dipping down there. We had a very high levels. And as a result, we do see a bunch of internal charging hazards. And the F2 layer is looking a little more charged than it has been. No surprise there. And the auroras are pretty significant right now. Let's look at the gong too. You see an active region rising, and you can see a little bit of turbulence over in this region. Otherwise, nothing too extravagant going on with that. We did think we saw a coronal mass ejection yesterday, so head to solarham.net, go to the Lasco C2, and have a look. We'll see some ejecta coming out of the western limb there. Get the timestamps for you in case you want to go check it out yourself or run other animations. So there's that. We'll let that play through again. some of the latest coronal mass ejection. Next, how about some magnetosphere movies? Here's the velocity. We do see some high velocity zones there around the dusk terminator. And on the dawn side, that's referring to the equatorial plane. See those green areas representing high velocity, and some in the magneto tail there on the meridional plane. Here is the density. See a couple perturbations there in that. I'll let that play through. Here's the pressure. See the pressure is quite high.
and the nighttime plasma sphere is very small, which means it's very close to the planet. Moving on to ground geospace perturbations. First, we'll look at the situation from the poles. We see quite a bit of undulations there going on with that. Keep in mind, this is not a direct measurement. This is a change in the B field. And for those of you not aware, a B field is the field that goes through a magnet. So, for instance, with respect to the sun, the B field would be the interplanetary magnetic field and the heliospheric current sheet. In this case, it's the Earth's field. We won't get into the weeds about how it's generated, at least not today. And we'll let that play through a second time there. We do see some, some pulses coming out of the Pacific Ocean there, west of South America. Quite a bit of perturbations going on, folks. Also, it's a good time to reference the fact that we have two North Poles right now, one over Canada, one over Siberia, and the South Pole is headed up toward India. Here's a volcano rundown. So we got Kerensky producing a 10,000-foot ash plume. Mount Ibu, 7,000 foot ash plume there. Tacono, 7,000 foot ash plume there. Fuego, dissipated volcanic ash. Revenador, new emissions. Sabancaya, unable to detect. Pretty much a volcano downtick there. Let's look at earthquakes. We would note that there was a 7.1, I believe is what it ended up being in Peru. Uh, probably less than an hour after we put up our video yesterday. So while we're on the large map here, let's just draw in the earthquake watch zones, which are this area here, and here, and here. Try to draw this a little better for you. More like that area there. We are still experiencing a drought in six and seven magnitude earthquakes. So have an earthquake plan if you live in an earthquake prone area. Let's go back 11 hours. We see a bit of an uptick here. Got a 4.6 in the Philippines at depth. 4.4 in Japan. Bunch of quakes still hitting Alaska. Chile with a 5.2. Now here's one of the more one of the more scary quakes, people. This 508 kilometer quake here off of Fiji. Very deep. Also a 558 kilometer depth, 4.6 magnitude quake. I clicked the wrong thing. Off uh, Indonesia. Let's see where that one was. In the Flores Sea, apparently. There you go. Not far from Java. And 4.8 in Japan. 4.5 in the Owen Fracture region. I'm having trouble clicking on stuff. The Owen Fracture Zone, eh? Not sure where that's located. In the Arabian Sea. So that's a pretty rare one there. Let's see. Also, Papua New Guinea with a 5.2. A 6.0 in Japan. 
Hopefully that one didn't cause too much damage. It is off the coast. Four point nine on the mid mid Atlantic Ridge. So we do see a bit of an uptick here. Uh, however, that one six point zero and those other deep quakes do suggest more quakes to come in the future. So, those of you not familiar with the uh, earthquake prediction technique, check out Suspicious Observers. Ben Davidson will teach you how to predict earthquakes. Now, let's look at some cosmic rays here, as we haven't for a few days. First, we'll look at Athens. Kind of in a steady range at Athens. Here's Mexico City. Here's Moscow. Their data is really behind at Moscow for some reason now. And here's Olu, Finland, and the two Antarctican monitors. There's DOMC. And there's DOMB. We'll leave links to this site, which has got all the references. Here's a value added service that we often provide here on Smash O Mash channel. A little bit of US Doppler radar. A lot of our viewers do watch these videos first thing in the morning. There's a situation. And for those of you interested in what's going on with that storm in the northeast, well, here's the water vapor map. It's going to slowly dissipate to the east throughout the day. Probably in about an hour and a half, it'll be gone from Pennsylvania. Since we did see some electron storm level conditions there and some charging hazards, here's the total electron content. Just a little denser than usual. Nothing too crazy going on there. Uh, total electron content is associated with things like GPS errors and satellite charging hazards. And here's the Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard. Looking at the Enlil prediction. See this long-lasting coronal hole wind stream here? Expected to remain in the five to 600 kilometer range, according to this, through March 5th. I find that a little hard to believe, but we will be keeping an eye on it. Now we've got a lot of preppers who watch our, our channel here, and here's a great article from Zero Hedge. You should absolutely read this. It's a great reference, and it's got references to a lot of other stuff. Here's how you'll die when the beep hits the fan, and how to prevent your untimely demise. Great article. Highly suggest you read it. The prediction is by some experts, that within 30 days of the power going out, 50% of Americans will be dead, and within a year, an astounding 90% of the population will be dead. Do you want to survive? Do you want your children to survive? Well, read the information. Have a, prepping, have a preparedness plan. Here are the 10 ways to die in a long-term disaster. I'm just going to break them down real quick. You die of thirst or waterborne illness. You die from fantasy world planning. Because people aren't prepared to do what they'll have to do, like chop wood and go hunting and so on. You freeze to death. Notice how there's no references in this article about how you'll burn, since global warming isn't real. You'll starve to death. You'll have an accident involving major trauma. Because by the way, folks, even if all diseases were cured, you'd still only live about 400 years, because you'd eventually die in an accident. 
Six, you get murdered when raiders or looters come to steal your stuff. This is where the bullets portion of the beans, bullets, and band-aids come in. You get sick. Not too unlikely in a, in a blank hits the fan scenario. You get an infection. You die because you're fat and out of shape. Or you die when your daily medication runs out. We'll leave links. Great article on Zero Hedge. Well done. Speaking of great articles, here's another one. We love it when they eat their own. And they're doing it again. Oh no, the Hillary-Bernie feud escalates. We love Bernie. We really, we really love Bernie. I mean, America's favorite one percenter who spends all day bloviating, bloviating about the one percent, which he is one of. He's got three houses, folks. He's got one in Burlington. He's got one on some lake somewhere in Vermont. And he's got a downtown townhouse right in Washington, D.C. In other news, Bernie's wife, Jane, bankrupted a college. I'm not sure if she had ended up going to jail over it. I guess she somehow bought her way out. Anyway, interesting article here about how Hillary staffers and Bernie staffers are still arguing and bickering. We love it. Well done. Well done. I don't have any quotes from Bernie here, but I would love to quote Bernie. Eat your own. Here's a Fizz.org article. Atmospheric scientists offer climate change clues in new studies. Now notice notice what they're showing you here. What are they showing you there? What is that? That's melting ice in the Arctic. We're not even going to read the article. I mean, I read the article. I'm not going to read the article on here. Let me just talk about ocean warming. How do we know how, how warm the ocean is? Well, we use satellites. Well, what do satellites do? Satellites check the ocean surface temperature. Well, what does that do? Nothing. There's massive amounts of heat latency in the ocean, people. And by the way, you can't measure the ocean's temperature with a satellite. You got to measure the temperature three meters deep to even have a clue what the ocean's temperature is. Satellites don't do it. And we don't currently know the temperature of places like the Indian Ocean. So just putting it out there that we don't even know the planet's temperature, yet there's a lot of folks concerned that it's warming, which it's also not doing. Now let's look at the real data from what that stupid photograph of that guy on a laptop was looking at. There's the real scenario. By the way, those red parts are four and a half meter thick ice. So you can see the eastern portion of Greenland. It's frozen like 50 miles out into the ocean there. Uh, Northwest Passage, completely frozen. And sea ice volume is right in the beefy part of the range. Let's look at Global Cryosphere Watch. Just to show you what the north hemis the northern hemisphere snow mass is right now. There's the total snow mass in the northern hemisphere, excluding mountains. It's so far off the top of the graph that it's going to change the entire average. Next year, that blue area is going to be different because there's so much snow on the ground right now, which is how glaciers form, by the way, folks. Just saying. So global warming, global warming, really scary. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. The planet's warming. So I typed in DuckDuckGo, do cold temperatures kill people or do hot temperatures kill people? It took about one search result to find an article from 2015. USA Today. Study shows cold kills 20 times more people than heat. It's 20 times as deadly as hot weather, and it's not the extreme low or high temperatures. The study found the majority of deaths occurred on moderately hot and moderately cold days instead of during extreme temperatures. Okay.
Anyway, I don't know why they titled the article that way. I guess it's just clickbait reasons. Science Daily, citing the same data. Summary, cold weather kills 20 times as many people as hot weather, according to an international study analyzing over 74 million deaths in 384 locations and 13 countries. The findings also reveal that deaths due to moderately hot or cold weather substantially exceed those resulting from extreme heat waves or cold spells. I guess they're just slipping in that caveat at the end there so they can claim global warming or global colding or whatever. I don't know. I don't care. Moving on. Heading back to the sun, 304 angstroms. Looking at this active region rising, and we do see some filamentary activity there. Nothing too extreme. See if this shows that ejecta. You may see a coronal mass ejection going off of the western limb. I didn't really see it happen. Let's just zoom in and look at that active region rising. In any case, thanks for watching. Thanks donors. Thanks subscribers. Please don't forget to press the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you enjoy the content, we'll be doing it every day. Remember, when you're calling them like you see them, don't drink. And if you drink, call them like you see them. Just don't drive.